Hi everyone and welcome back to a different kind of video. Today I'm going to play with stitchables. These are different types of dies that you can work with and you can play with your threads. There are many different designs that come in this packaging. You can see here there is a little heart with a lovely border all around. There are tons and tons of different shapes both for Christmas and other generic ones like this rectangle one that I will be working with today. And I have a bunch of them here. This is a mitten, a sweater and I will be working with them today. I am going to use them to create seven cards. You can see the hat as well as the stocking. These are lovely for creating Christmas cards. And there are generic shapes just like I showed you before. The heart, the square, the um, circle. Notice the lovely border and the detail here and I will be working with this one so you will see it in action. This is a plate that I'm going to show you later on how you can use it. It's a really great tool when you are working with uh, stitchables. And here are uh, different uh, designs such as those zigzags. Here is another set. This is um, the square one with three squares, a little tag as well as a row. And you can even stitch the um, initial of your recipient in the little tag. I think this, is, this would be really fun. Now here is another one, this time with circles, three in a row, a little circle in a tag as well as a row that can cover both vertically or horizontally your card. And here is another one. This is uh, pretty much the same idea as the previous sets, but with hearts. And I will be working with this one today. You can do your die cutting and start stitching. Have fun while you watch TV or while you listen to your audiobooks. And um, then I'm going to show you many different ideas on how you can turn these focal points, these die cuts with the stitching into cards. So today I'm not going to focus that much on how you can stitch. There are other videos for that. Rather, I will be uh, focusing on how you can turn them into cards. I'm going to cut out my shapes and I'm using my Gemini for that. And notice that I'm not using white cardstock. For the mitten, I'm going with a blue one. For the sweater, I'm going with a craft one. Just uh, think of what thread you are going to use and help the design by using a similar color of cardstock. So after running it through my uh, Gemini, I had no problem at all die cutting this one. So I like to die cut my shapes, have a bunch of them in a box and I take it with me in the living room or in the yard and have fun stitching. Now when you get those tiny little dots inside and you want to take them out, you either need to poke them with a needle or you can use this plate. This is especially designed for the stitchables. All you have to do is to rub the cutout on top and you will see that all those little uh, uh, dots fall out. Of course, if you want to clean up the dies for die cutting one more time, then you need to have uh, another needle to poke all these things out. Or you can use one of those um, die cut uh, tools that really make the job super easy. So I'm going to continue die cutting the row of hearts. I'm going to die cut it from white cardstock. I'm also going to die cut a row of squares so you can see the different designs. I will use the square one, the big square one, as well as red cardstock for the stocking. And by the magic of video editing, you will see all of them ready to go. So here is the one with the row of hearts where I used three different threads in the shade of pink all the way from lighter to darker. So I'm getting kind of an ombre effect. Of course, you can go use your favorite colors and stitch them in. And then at the back, you will see that it is quite flat. And down below, I am going to link to a video by Waffle Flower Crafts where they share lots of tips and tricks on how you can stitch on paper, plus how you can avoid creating knots at the back. So having stitched elements on top of a panel, I think it makes this super extra special since this is something that you spend lots of time stitching. So you don't really need to do a lot with such panels. And I like to keep these designs quite clean and simple. So at the back, I'm going to use foam tape. I placed that on a pink cardstock. And then this one on top of a pre-folded card that's four and a quarter by five and a half. Now there is a stamp set that is perfect for all these stitchables. It's called Stitched Sentiments and I love that it has some words uh, written as if uh, they are stitched. I stamp that towards the top so at the bottom I have plenty of uh, area to write my personal message. 
Here are some close-up photos and you will find still photos of the designs that I stitched on my blog as well if you want to follow the exact same patterns. So on the inside I stamped you are the thread that keeps us together which I think finishes that card really beautifully. For the next one I used this die with the three squares and this gives you the opportunity to create different designs in each and every one of them. These are all free designs that I find online and I shrink them somehow to make sure that they fit into those squares. These are super cute and you will find close-up photos on my blog as well if you want to follow the exact same patterns. Also notice that you don't have to stitch all around. If you want to save time, just leave it like that, like I did. I think it looks just fine and I haven't covered up the whole stitchable area. However, in the first design I did cover up the whole heart. So just different ways that you can play with if you want to avoid time-consuming stitching. So again, I have foam squares at the back. I'm going to stick these on top of a pattern paper and I'm going to stick a tie cut that says hello. I glued this panel on top of a pre-folded card that's four and a quarter by five and a half and then on the inside I'm going to use one more stamp set from this sentiment stamp set and that says each stitch on this card is a hug from me. I think this is super adorable and again towards the top so I have plenty of area at the bottom to write my personal message and here are some close-up photos on the card as well as some close-ups on the designs of the cacti. And let's move on to the mitten. I went with uh, this lovely bluish one and I did stitch a snowflake on the center. I also added a white thread at the top just to um, add something more interesting. And now I have die cut little snowflakes from a die that I had in my stash forever. I'm going to stick those snowflakes on a white cardstock. So I'm going white on white. It's going to give that embossing look. It's going to add something extra on the background to make it look interesting while being very subtle. So I'm going for a winter card here, but depending on the sentiment or the colors that you use for the mitten, you can easily turn it into a Christmas card. I did die cut the word winter using a die that I had from last year and I used silver cardstock for that. I'm going for uh, a card for winter and I love the combination when it comes to winter cards with blues, whites and silver. I am going to stick everything down with my Nouveau Deluxe glue and you will find just like always everything I'm using linked down below in the description area. You can complete the sentiment if you like by stamping a small hello so you will have hello winter or uh, happy winter. I decided to leave it as it is. I'm using foam tape at the back of my meter. I'm going to stick it down and then the whole panel is going to go on another panel which is four and a quarter by five and a half and it is uh, silver glitter. At the center of the three die cut snowflakes that I have in the background I'm going to add a silver gemstone and this is going to complete my card. For the next one I'm going to use the stocking, I die cut it from red cardstock, I covered it up with a red thread as well as some white at the top, so you had Santa's stocking there. Of course you can go a step further and add a little design. In the previous cards I used foam tape at the back and it holds beautifully. Here I am experimenting with double sided tape and I had no issues at all. Of course you can use red tape which is even stronger. I'm peeling off the backing and then I'm going to stick this on top of a little panel. This is made out of glitter cardstock, so it has lovely shine on it. And I'm going to stick on top the word joy that I have die cut from a gold cardstock. I'm going to use my Nouveau Deluxe glue to stick this on top of the stitched area and I find that it holds nicely. I will have an area of the letter Y sticking out, so just to make sure that everything is nicely leveled, I did use a very tiny piece of foam tape there. And don't worry, I will stick the dot for the J later on. Now, at the top of your uh, stocking, you can have little presents. You can die cut them and stick them coming out from the sock 
or like I'm going to do here, I did have that um, uh, confetti mix in my stash from uh, years ago, so I'm just going to stick some of those uh, sequins here and there. This panel is going on top of a four and a quarter by five and a half red cardstock with foam squares at the back, just because I love dimension. And here are some close-up photos. So here is my little heart already. I did uh, decide to create little hearts. If you notice, they are not uh, nicely aligned, but that doesn't bother me at all. I am going to use foam tape at the back and stick it on top of this uh, uh, green cardstock. This has a little bit of shine on it and it is embossed. It's a specialty paper that I had in my stash by Nuvo. I finished off my card by using again the same winter dye and a secondary sentiment. And here is my favorite of all. This is the Christmas sweater with Rudolf on top. You can add a little red cross stitch at the center to give him Rudolf's nose, but I decided instead to give him a gem as a nose. I'm going to stick that down with Novo Deluxe glue. I wasn't sure if that was strong enough to stick on thread a little gem, but it seems just fine. It's holding on great. And let's put together the card. I have this pattern paper and on top I'm going to stick a strip of uh, craft cardstock where I have already embossed my sentiment. I'm using foam tape at the back and this craft cardstock is the same as the craft cardstock that I have on the sweater. And now all I have to do is to stick this panel on top of a pre-folded card that's four and a quarter by five and a half. And here are some close-up photos. And now finally for my little square, this is a great canvas to stitch whatever you like. I decided to go with this fun uh, little uh, cupcake and I did stitch that towards the bottom because I want to have my sentiment on top. However, you can add whatever you like at the center of the canvas. Also notice that I didn't cover up the whole canvas with stitching. I didn't want this to be very time consuming. So all I'm going to do is to stamp the sentiment and I went with thinking of you with each stitch. I stamped that on pink cardstock that is uh, very close to the color of the pink thread that I used and I'm going to create a banner out of it. I think this design is super adorable and it's going to bring a smile on the recipient. I created a little 4x4 pink note card and I have all the foam squares hidden behind the different elements, so you can't really tell where they are through all those holes. And here are some close-up photos on the last card for today with this adorable little cupcake. Again, you will find photos on my blog if you want to recreate the patterns. I had so much fun creating all these cards and I know you will have lots of fun too if you love stitching. Links to everything I used are listed below in the description area. I hope that you had fun today, that you got inspired. Thank you all so much for spending some time with me and I hope you will all have a lovely day.